Konnichiwa, Raxandas! And today I'm coming to you from a Holiday Inn near Dulles Airport because we're about to go to Japan! Yay! Japan, here we come! Before we get into the whole Anna flight and how it was and all that, we want to discuss a couple things that you should do before you get on the flight that'll help make your trip to Japan much, much better. Number one, you want to call your credit card company. And why? To let them know that you're going to Japan. Because you know what's going to happen? The first time you try to use your credit card in a foreign country, it's going to decline. Because they're going to assume it was stolen. So you need to call and let them know that you're going to a foreign country so that it'll keep working and until you come back. Because you'll have to give them the date range that you'll be there. Kitty. Number two, you're gonna to wanna to find out about your cell phone company. We use Sprint, and lucky for us, Sprint um, in Japan, all you have to do is call Sprint before you leave. For one month, you'll pay an extra $5. An extra $5 will be added to your bill for a month, and you'll be able to unlimited text, call, that kind of thing from Japan. So that's good. You don't have to get a SIM card or any of that stuff. So just call them and find out. There's probably other carriers that do the same thing, but you'll need to call and find out if they do that. Otherwise you will have to get a SIM or just use Wi-Fi or get pocket Wi-Fi, some options. But if you have Sprint, you are all set. Just give them a call. Number three, go to your bank ahead of going and get yen. It's probably gonna be less expensive and You'll want to get a lot because Japan is a cash company or cash, cash country, not company, cash country. And a lot of places, even if you call ahead about your credit card, they're still not going to take your credit card. And like even Disney, we thought Disney would take it. We went on their website, tried to buy tickets with our credit cards, and it was a big pain in the butt. So we ended up just having to risk it and take the train there and hope that they still had tickets by the time we got there because they limit how many tickets they sell in a day to Disney. Definitely get a lot of yen. For two weeks, we each take $2,000. I take $2,000 in yen and my husband took $10,000 in yen. And that seemed to be a good amount. The first time we went, I came back with $600 worth of yen and the second time we went, I came back with $300 worth of yen. So yeah, good amount to take. About $1,000 worth of yen for each week that you're going. Unless you are a spendaholic, then maybe take more. Number four, find out about transportation from the airport you're flying into to Tokyo, wherever you're going in Tokyo. Um, we always fly out of Narita so far. We haven't gone through Haneda. And from Narita, you have a couple of options. You could take a taxi, which is about $240, kind of expensive. Um, you could take a limo bus, which was $28 for each of us. And that was nice. The only bad thing about the limo bus is depending on traffic. Like the first time we went, the limo bus, we got there probably 50 minutes to an hour. The second time we went, there was a lot of traffic and it felt like it took two or three hours. I don't know if it was that long. It just felt that way. So taking the bus, how long it takes you to get from Narita to Tokyo will depend on traffic. Um, the next is the Skyliner, which is $25 per person. There's just a couple of stops, like Ueno is one of them, that's where we usually get on the Skyliner. And that's a fast option and it won't depend on traffic, so you'll probably be in Tokyo in an hour. You might want to find a hotel that's near a Skyliner stop, just so when you get off the Skyliner you can usually walk to your hotel. Um, we usually stay in Akihabara and end up going, we take the limo bus to Tokyo. Tokyo Station and then from Tokyo Station because we have so much luggage we usually just take a taxi which the first time cost about $16 and then the second time we went it only cost $9.50 so yeah a lot of cheap a lot cheaper the second time not sure why might have something to do with the Olympics I don't know you can also take a cheaper bus which is like $10 a person 
However, every time we're in the airport, we never see it. We never see information. It's always like a limo bus, which is right there when you come out of the area where you get your luggage. You can buy a ticket right there and then you just walk right outside and you'll see the bus stops for the limo bus. Where the regular buses, I don't know. And the Skyliner, I think the reason we never see it either is because you gotta go downstairs like four flights down into the basement, like basement level sub four, I don't know. It's way down there. And the floor that you're on when you're leaving is like the fourth floor. So far for us, the limo bus has been the easiest because as soon as you get your luggage, you go out and it's right there. And that's another reason to go ahead and get the yen while you're still in the US or that way when you land at the airport, you already have money that you can spend to get your limo bus tickets or your Skyliner tickets. Um, there are exchange places and it's pretty easy to walk up, but I just feel better already having it. And also, you're going to see lots of vending machines. You're going to need that yen to get the vending machine. Yummy! Tip number five, check into your airline, which in our case was ANA, at home. 24 hours before and print it out because it the line is so much shorter for the pre-check-in than for the people who didn't check in ahead of time. So definitely do that. Save yourself some time. That way you have more time at the airport to have snacks or shop, whatever you need to do. Make sure to print out the name and address of your hotel in Japanese just in case you if you have a taxi driver or something and he doesn't understand you can just show it to him look there it is or have it on your phone where you can easily get to it but make sure you have it accessible so you can show it and say here's where we're going or well, usually just saying Washington Hotel which is where we stayed um, is good enough they seem to know what you're talking about and when we stayed at Dormy Inn, just saying Dormy Inn and they pretty much know where to go. Like both of those hotels in Akihabara, so we just say Akihabara and we were good to go. Dormy Inn, Akihabara. Pack at least a day's worth of clothes or even more and anything you absolutely can't live without or would freak out if you lost it in your carry-on. That way, especially if you have a layover somewhere, like maybe you land in China and then from China you go to Japan or maybe you land in Boston and from Boston you go to Japan. That way in case they lose your luggage, um, you have something until they recover it and um, you don't have to go around in dirty clothes. The next tip, add um, identifiable stuff to your luggage. A lot of luggage looks the same, so unless you have some crazy looking luggage with skulls all over it or something, um, you may want to put some stickers on it, put like a cute little cat thing with your name and address on it, and maybe tape your name and address to the bottom. That way if they do lose it, more likely get it back to you because they have information who it belongs to. Also take pictures of your luggage because trust me, they lost our luggage before and they take you in and they're gonna ask you to identify it. And you really have to, like they're gonna ask you what brand it was, what it looked like, what type of luggage it is. And I was like, I don't know, a Samsonite maybe? And then you have to look through this thing of all kinds of pictures of luggage if you don't know what it was, trying to identify what your luggage looked like. So if you have a picture, you can just say, there you go. This is what my luggage looked like. And last but not least, take pictures of your parking section and your bus station number so that when you come back a week later, two weeks later, um, you remember where you parked so the bus driver doesn't have to drive you all over the place looking for your vehicle. This plane, the Emirates, is a monster. It looks like it has two levels. I bet it has a bar and stuff in it too. I think that's our plane, but it could just be a different plane. We're on the plane now. We're flat flying Anna this time instead of uh, Japan Air. And here is the window. Here's Pokey. 
all ready for the long flight. Right now it's midnight and clearly not midnight here. This is going to be a long, long day. Unlike Japan Air, this window doesn't have the shading thing where you can put it in stages, which was very useful, so I'll miss that feature. But they do have movies. Hopefully they're working, because they just said something's not working. Hopefully it's not the movies that are broken. And of course you got all the normal stuff. You get a blanket, and you get a little pillow. We bought neck pillows this time. Hopefully that'll help us sleep. Otherwise we're gonna be out of our minds by the time we get to Tokyo. And we put all our stuff at the bottom. It's just easier to get it than to try to put it in the overhead bin. We have a sky map so you always know where you are, which is pretty cool. I watch this a lot on the Japan air flight. So I'll probably probably be looking at this a lot again if I can't sleep. Here's the in-service flight menu, what you can expect during your flight. A picture of some of the foods you'll get. We'll be getting beverages soon and then food and then we're gonna try and sleep. Zach, of course, got himself a beer. Our first meal is here. It's beef and rice. So you got these. You get these sides, some water, like a cabbage salad and noodles. And then we got the meat. There's our first dinner. So dinner was pretty good. Um, the wasabi was super hot for not being real wasabi. Pretty good though. Do you like your dinner? It was good. Hi, we're in our room now. Um, it's super small. I think it's smaller than the one we had in Akihabara, the other one in Akihabara, um, the dormy inn. And I'll give you a room tour in just a second. I stopped filming on the airplane because about, I don't know, seven or eight hours in, I just started to lose it. <laughs> just want to get off the plane. But we did have uh, two more meals besides the one that I filmed. One was just a, um, like an egg salad sandwich, a half of one and a drink. And then the next one we got the pasta, which was kind of like a lasagna. And it was, none of them were bad. I think I liked Japan Airs better and so did my husband. It was all good, um, but it was a really long flight. It was like 13 hours and 40 minutes. And then leaving the airport, we took the limousine bus, which was 2,800 yen. And it took forever, it felt like. Like when we came the first time, it didn't seem like it took long at all. This time it took forever. And then we made it to our room and now we're in here. And here I will show you around. I may take the mic off though, just to make it easier. It's a little bit meh. 
messy right now because sadly we are moved in. So here's our area to put coats or whatever. Got the stuff here right now. The tiny little hall. The bathroom's in there. And I will show you that when Pookie's done with it. If you get this little area, there's like a little cupboard to put stuff in. And this is a thing for heating water. And get shoes and shoe, sign, sh shoe shine stuff. Place to put your shoes. And you get these and you get to keep them. And down this hall, as you see, the room is very small. There's our bed. It's probably about a full size bed. TV. Which I have the volume turned down right now. Showing lots of Japanese fun stuff. And we've got this area. Not a lot of plugs in here. Which is tough. There's a refrigerator hidden in there, a little tiny one, and they give you robes. I don't know if we get to keep those or not. Probably not. The slippers we do get to keep. We've got this tiny little couch. And the, the bed's not bad. This is fun. I had to use Google Translate to figure out how to use it. And then there's a humidifier over here. Yep, this is where we'll be for the next 12 days. As you can see, we kind of have to space manage everything. So that we can actually walk around because our, our bags are too big. And there is Akihabara! Far less people than last night. We did go out for a little while. We went to one of the Segas and played some uh, crane games, but didn't stay out very long. Went to a family mart and got some good stuff to eat, some snacks, and then crashed because we were super, super tired. Yep, that is the room, and we'll be going out soon. This thing here is the key to your room. And you have to put it in this box because if you don't, there's no power. So every time you leave, you take the key out, all the power in your room goes out. Unless you leave it in there. Here's the bathroom. I'm trying to keep it from looking too messy, but now that we're moved in, that'll be hard. This is a pretty good sized bathroom though, compared to the size of the Dormany hotel that we had. And it actually has a bathtub and it's really deep. And you see you can get all these shampoos and body wash and stuff that come with it. You get some toothbrushes. They have a hair dryer. I brought my own though. And normal stuff you would find. Those spongy things came in it too. And of course you got a washlet. And it's a Toto washlet. But it's not the super fancy kind that play music and when you walk in the lid opens all by itself, but it's still cool. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this information useful if you're planning a trip to Japan. Um, if you have any questions or comments or you feel like I left some information out that you would like to know more about, please let me know and I'll do my best. And thanks! Matane! Please like and subscribe. More Japanese videos are coming.